Hey guys, Killer6 here. I'm bringing you a video today talking about the best sniper rifles in the game. And I'm going to show you what I think is the best sniper rifle in the game, both just statistically, ease of use, ease of acquisition, I guess you would say. And just, it's a great all around sniper rifle. So let's get started with the, the test here. The Adventure Longbow, and fire only, not as versatile as some guns. Tum Tum Elephant Gun, lack of sight takes getting used to, and the rate of fire, not great. The Invader performs uh, a little better than expected. As you can see, when you put all the shots on target, it's good. Volcano, once again, suffers from being fire only. Gentleman's Pimpernel, about the bottom of the pack without the B. Raz Raz White Death, low power per shot, but lots of shots. Tum Tum Skull Masher without a B, pretty good. And the Skookum Skull Masher, which a lot of people were telling me was going to be better, not as good. The Tum Tum Hawkeye with no B, only 164k. The Skookum Hawkeye outperforms it at 198. Skookum Cobra is just average without the B. And here's the first big surprise, the Sloth. Look at that, you combine that, 426,000. It outperformed all the other ones. And we're going to run the test again, turning on Badass Rank, setting up a skill tree for sniping specifically. We're also going to use the B Shield, a basic class mod sniper boost, which doesn't increase any specific skill tree items, and a relic that gives 30% extra damage to sniper rifles. So we have the Venture Longbow, very high power. Again, only has fire element, so that weakens it in this competition. Tum Tum Elephant Gun, the lack of sight is annoying. It is very powerful and has a decent rate of fire. The Auditing Invader, which ends up being the second most powerful with the B on this firing range test. Gentleman's Volcano performs about average, again, fire element only. Gentleman's Pimpernel, this one uh, kind of shines with the B. As you can see there, it gets about 1.9 million. Again, with the White Death, this thing shoots really crazy fast, but each bullet's kind of weak. Tum Tum Skull Masher, which used to be my favorite gun until the B nerf broke it. As you can see right there, it does not get all the, the damage. Skookum Hawkeye, which performed far... Weaker than I expected, to be honest with you. And the Skook and Cobra with just over a million damage, kind of middle of the pack. And again, we come to the Phosphor Sloth and watch this. Three round burst, which has very little kick. All on target, 3.25 million damage. Looking at our list here, we can see that the Sloth was the highest per burst in both non-B and B tests. The Longbow finished second in the non-B and fourth with the B. Tum Tum Skull Masher was 3rd and ninth, respectively. Tum Tum Elephant was 4th and 6th, and Skookum Hawkeye was 5th best in both categories. Looking at the test with the B on, though, we see the Invader finish 2nd and the Pimpernel was 3rd. These numbers can mean pretty much anything that you want them to mean, and none of it matters when you're surrounded by bad guys and your teammates need you to snipe your way out of a mess. So, let's see how the best of the best performed in the beatdown. To keep this video from pushing the 10 minute mark, I'll just give you guys the guns that performed the best in the beatdown, and then we'll finish up by showing the best ones from Washburn Refinery. The Skookum Hawkeye performed far better in the field than it did on the firing range, absolutely dominating here. I was able to rush through the beatdown pretty quick, and my life was never in any danger whatsoever despite having the B-Shield on. A lot of uh, the enemies were very, very easily dispatched with uh, criticals here, and the bikes at the end just absolutely had no chance whatsoever. The Skookum Cobra performed pretty much on par with the Hawkeye, and it only took me maybe a little bit longer than Hawkeye did, but I was able to be a little bit less accurate and the explosive damage was able to take care of the rest for me. The enemies in the beatdown don't move a whole lot so it's a lot easier to you know, get them with hip fire and get them even when they're behind cover especially with something like this that does explosive damage. <laughs> and uh, I, you know they just they'll walk right at you. They're just freaking brilliant aren't they? The bikes absolutely had zero chance with the Cobra. I could have just hip fired all the way through this area probably. What's up midget? The Gentleman's Pimpernel made the list here because it really, really surprised me in this area. Even though a lot of these guys are resistant to fire damage, I had to use this gun because I was unable to find a critical hit damage one at the beginning. Look at that, I even got that guy behind cover. The explosive pellets in this thing just absolutely tear through the bikes as well. The Phosphor Sloth, again, despite using a variant on this gun that most of the enemies here resisted, since I wasn't able to get the critical version of both this and the Pimpernel and I wanted to be on the on even ground, this gun still took out almost every single enemy here in one or two pulls of the trigger. The main problem came toward the end though when uh, the bikes 
pop out because they're resistant to fire and unlike the Pimpernel, this gun does not have any sort of exploding projectiles that'll split. I'd say between these four, the Hawkeye and the Cobra were tied for first, maybe Hawkeye slightly ahead, but both the Pimpernel and the Sloth outdid all of the other remaining guns on the list, so every one of these guns would be an excellent choice for this area. I would recommend not using the fire variants of both the Pimpernel and the Sloth though, and that would have made it even better, possibly even putting them ahead of the Cobra. So now we go to Washburn Refinery and we test out a few other guns. Start with the Skookum Hawkeye. And I gotta be honest with you, my first few shots, I was just kinda getting the feel for this. I wasn't used to the zoom. But then once I got the hang of it, criticals on robots with the Hawkeye are just epic. There's no better way to describe it. They're dead. You you hit that red dot of their eyeball, they are gone. Pimpernel is one of those guns that I just didn't even think about when I started to do this test and then a few people mentioned it on the uh, GameFAQs forums and I thought yeah I should probably get one of those and test it out and I am glad I did. The firing range dummy doesn't always tell the full story obviously and taking this here into the refinery I got a, a much better feel for how this thing works. As you can see when you fire it you'll get these explosive blasts that pop out of wherever your bullet goes. So you want to get, you know, not necessarily on the critical all the time, but right around the critical, and that usually will do the trick. Um, this one was probably the third best in the refinery, and you will see the, the one that actually just absolutely shines right here, the sloth. The three round burst on this thing versus these robots, and I used the um, the critical damage bonus one on this just like I did with the, uh, the other two weapons. The thing that sets this gun apart from the others is that you have the three round burst and pretty much wherever you aim that is where the burst goes. It doesn't kick, it doesn't jump, it doesn't sway. Uh, unlike the White Death that has a lot of kick and a lot of sway, this one goes right where you want it to go. And right here, I just throw in some footage of the corrosive version just to show how powerful this gun really is. And here's a robot that's resistant to corrosion, and I still take him out with two bursts. And a lot of times, you know, I'm not the most accurate sniper. So, as you saw right there, I didn't even really get it on the critical. But I, I kind of pulled a little bit toward where I thought the critical mark was at, and it just took care of him. This gun's weakness is against fast moving targets, but then again, why would you use a sniper rifle on a fast moving target? So now that I've shown you the best all around sniper in the game, let me show you how to get it and how to farm for it. First of all, you need the Rackaholics Anonymous mission, except that from Mordecai and Sanctuary when you're on playthrough 2.5, which means you defeated the end boss twice in story mode. After accepting the mission, head to the dust and grab a car. Whoa, check this out, I'm surfing. Now what you want to do is track down this vehicle, shoot it until it gives you all 10 barrels, then you'll have the option to return it to either Mordecai or Moxie. Moxie gives you the ruby, Mordecai gives you the sloth. So return to Sanctuary. Now what you want to do is insert a second controller and log in with another different profile. Take player 1's controller and turn off your badass rank turn it back on. What that does is it forces a save. Now take the player 2 controller, go up to Mordecai and turn in the mission. What this does is it gives both you and player 2 the item, then what you want to do is player 2 will just save and quit. Now player 2 will have that item in their inventory. Each subsequent time that you do this, you will get the item on player 1. Then all you have to do is just take it from player 1, drop it on the ground. Player 2 grabs it, saves and quits. Player 1 will then dashboard and then restart the game. Repeat this process as much as you want to get as many variations as you'd like. If you found this video helpful, please take a moment to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks and have a great day.